I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Old School Bodybuilding Clothing Company. If it's been three and a half hours since you last ate protein, and now you're starting to freak out, you are old school. If watching someone sit on a hammer machine for five minutes between sets playing with their phone pisses you off, you are definitely old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle rant. Today's topic, insulin. It seems to be the topic everyone wants to know about and everyone you know, has a lot of misunderstanding about and misconceptions about and maybe they just don't understand the science of it because they really haven't um, studied it that much or maybe they just don't have a lot of experience with insulin and how it works. You know, it, it seems simple and it is ra rather simple. You know, when your body eats carbohydrates and, ra and blood sugar elevates, okay, and blood sugar could elevate not just from eating carbohydrates, from the liver releasing glucose from glycogen stores, or the liver turning amino acids into glucose. Anytime blood sugar goes up, okay, your pancreas, and your pancreas is a multi-organ um, multi type of situation because it releases digestive enzymes plus endocrine, um, or, uh, endocrine hormones such as glucagon and insulin and stuff like that and a bunch of other hormones. But predominantly what we're talking about here today is insulin production from the beta cells of the pancreas. So when blood sugar rises, the beta cells sense this elevation in blood sugar and they will produce and release insulin to bring blood sugar down. And the way it does that is the, the insulin actually drives the glucose into the cells of our body, feeds the cells essentially. So it enables the muscle cells and the brain cells to absorb glucose. When those cells are filled up, the extra can go into fat cells. So fat cells can store glucose as fat, okay, turn it into fatty acids. Um, inside the muscle cells, the brain cells, you know, uh, inside the liver and muscles, obviously glucose can be stored as glycogen, you know, for storage purposes and use later. Okay, but that's not what we're really concerned with here. We're, we're concerned with insulin usage or an insulin manipulation and insulin and how it works in bodybuilders. Because we eat so much food as bodybuilders, we put a tremendous strain on the pancreas to produce a lot of insulin. Okay, and usually guys that are in their you know, young 20s, even into their early 30s, usually have no problem handling a higher load of food. Um, and their pancreas, is, it does fine. And you know, I have to admit that I was a little ignorant when I was coming up, because no one knew very much about insulin and, and how it worked. And it was manipulated, okay? So what we did was we had to use a lot of trial and error. There weren't a lot of, every bodybuilder didn't have a glucose monitor. You couldn't go to Walmart and buy a glucose monitor for $9. They were hundreds of dollars in the pharmacy. I'd have a prescription for them. So no one really knew what their blood sugars were running. And we would take, you know, the usual anabolic stacks. We would do a little growth hormone at the time. It was very expensive. And some people got great results, some people didn't. And I noticed that I wasn't really growing as much from the GH that I was taking at two to three IUs a day and I felt very flat all the time and I surmised that it was because I maybe I wasn't absorbing all the food that I was eating because I was eating an enormous amount of food so I started supplementing with like a, a, a not a super fast acting but a kind of a mid fast acting a humulin R insulin and I noticed that I started gaining weight again but it was really there was no science to what I was doing it was like trial and error experimentation you know I was doing like 10 IUs in the morning and I, may, and I knew how many grams of carbs to eat for that amount of um, insulin I was taking. And I would do another sh you know, shot five, six hours later and it seemed to work fine, but I had no idea what my blood sugars were, so I was really ignorant about it. I just knew that I seemed to respond better when I did that and you know, I wasn't as flat. And so that was my protocol for many years. And then obviously I you know, met my, uh, one of the women I would dated for many years, Colette Nelson, who was a type one diabetic. And I started learning a lot more about insulin because she knew a lot about insulin. So she was a certified diabetes educator. And I started to understand that you, know, you have to really test blood sugar to know really what the status is of your body. And when I, what I started seeing, and I, as I started having more and more bodybuilders testing their blood sugar, myself included, I noticed that a lot of bodybuilders and to this day, I've probably read thousands and thousands of, of blood work from bodybuilders. I've seen 
innumerable bodybuilders with their fasting blood sugars taken on a daily basis. And I see a lot of them who are on GH and some who aren't, who are just on a lot of food, are running high fasting blood sugars. Fasting blood sugar is the first sugar you take when you wake up in the morning before you eat anything. And that blood sugar should really be under 90 if you want to have tight blood sugar control. Now you can tell what your blood sugar control is on a, on a three month average by getting what's called a hemoglobin A1C level tested when you go for blood work. And if that's under 5.5, 5.6, usually your blood sugar control is, is pretty good. If it's over that, now you're starting getting into the realm of insulin resistance and possible future diabetes problems, meaning that your body is not producing enough insulin to keep blood sugars down, and you're running high blood sugars for longer periods of time during the day than, than you should be, meaning it's taking a lot longer for your blood sugars to come down, if at all. And there's like a formula to figure out what your hemoglobin A1C is and what your average blood sugar is. But if it's under 5.6, 5.5, usually you're pretty good. Mine's down to 5.2. It was a little higher at one point. And um, this is when I was going through a point where I wasn't really exercising that much when I had my shoulders done. When I got back to exercising, my insulin sensitivity improved. But I'm not eating an enormous amount of food anymore. I, can only, I only can imagine what it might have been back in the day. And obviously, I used growth hormone for probably, you know, 12 to 13 years straight, you know, on and off on them. But, you know, most of the time I was on during that time. So when you're on growth hormone, because it works antagonistically to, G, to insulin, meaning that it inhibits insulin from working as well, your body actually has to produce more insulin to lower blood sugar. So it puts even a greater strain on the pancreas. So the pancreas has to work hard to begin with because you're eating a lot of carbs and a lot of protein. And then you put a further strain on it by making it not be able to do its job as well because you're taking GH, which works opposite of the way insulin works. And uh, so, you know, what I started to realize was that people's, you know, two hour post meal, which is called your post prandial blood sugars. So you take, you eat, two hours later, you take your blood sugar, it should be under 130. A lot of people's was, was, was in the right range, it was under 130. But yet they were waking up in the morning with high blood, fasting blood sugars. 95, 100, 105, 120. And I'm seeing a lot of these recently that's off the charts. And I'm like saying to myself, this is crazy. This is going to result in people having serious health problems later in life. Because, because what happens is if you're running high blood sugars all the time, it accumulates. And the longer you run them, the year after year after year, you start accumulating these, this, these excess blood sugars in your tissues, the retina of your eye, which can cause damage to your eyes the extremities, which can cause you know, lack of being able to feel them, neuropathies, possible amputations because of lack of circulation in the extremities, the toes and the fingers, and a multitude of other side effects. If it starts accumulating in the filtration apparatuses of the um, kidneys, you can have kidney uh, you know, failure. So this is not, you don't want to be running high blood sugars. Now, you could be eating a super clean diet, you could be exercising, and you still could be running high blood sugars. Why? Why is it genetics? Some people have a good insulin output in their body and some people are genetically programmed to have you know, insulin resistance and or uh, an inability for the pancreas to, to crank out insulin at a high level. And I know a lot of people who fit into this category. To ignore this is to be stupid and ignorant, okay? And causing your own damage to your body. That's just dumb, okay? Because we could take what's called long-acting insulins like Lantus or uh, Humulin N. I've talked this about this before. Walmart now sells Humulin N without a prescription. You don't even need a prescription. $25 a bottle for people who are, can't afford it. Um, and you know, there's a lot of people out there who can't afford to pay for insulin and they need it. Um, the higher-end long-acting insulins like uh, to Tojeho um, or um, Trishiba, which are true 24-hour insulins, you take them once a day. Um, are a little bit more expensive, but they all accomplish pretty much the same thing. Taking the burden off the pancreas. What does that mean? That means that the pancreas, if you're taking a long-acting insulin, the pancreas doesn't have to work as hard. Now, I was, someone pointed out a video that uh, James Hollingshead did the other day where he went to his doctor and they were kind of going through his blood work and everything like that, and the doctor asked him if he was using insulin. Let's play the clip. I'll take so. What about insulin? I don't use insulin now. Not at all. Not at all. Patrick doesn't like it. Took us totally off it. So obviously with my previous preps I used yeah. to. Yeah. It's yeah. dangerous. There's no point. Mm. There's no point. You might as well just keep your body sensitive yourself. Like I've realised yeah. now, if you eat the right, if you, as long as you, this is the problem. I previous coaches tried to eat to force feed and they use insulin to try and supplement it. It's bullshit. 
just eat enough that your body requires and, and train hard enough to demand yeah, it. because you actually do have a pancreas and what it yeah, does it do is it sees, it, sees, it, sees, it sees sugar and it, it produces insulin. Yeah, so let it. Yeah. Rather than yeah, then ch- force feed yeah. carbs. Yeah, because people pre pre training as the well. The problem is, is people also they're trying to like add an addition. They're trying to add addition all the time. Mm. So with insulin, they're not looking at it. They're not trying to use insulin even to help their self, like to take stress off the pancreas or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I want to throw another hundred grams of carbs in. That's so day, let's put day, another ten I use in. Dave Palumbo for yeah. stress, stress off the pancreas. Yeah, but I know which isn't it's bullshit. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so all right. So. Um, James makes a good statement in the sense that he thinks that he says people just want to take insulin, you know, to try to you know grow and and, and throw in extra food. And, and in a sense, you know, I agree. Sometimes people just think that I have to use insulin because everyone else is using insulin. That's ridiculous. But then he makes a stupid statement by saying, you know, the guy says points out that Dave Palumbo believes that you know taking insulin will take this, this strain off the pancreas. And then James goes, that's bullshit. Obviously, <laughs> it's not bullshit, obviously, because if you don't produce enough insulin, you know, it's great. It sounds great in theory that, yes, your pancreas should produce enough insulin to lower your blood sugar until it doesn't produce enough blood, uh, insulin to lower your blood sugar. Then what do you do? Oh, well, well, you know what? I'm fucked. I'll just, you know, I'll just die early. No, then you have to act. Okay, then you have to act. Either, that, either you have to stop bodybuilding altogether and lower your food intake down to almost nothing. So you take that, so the pancreas doesn't have to work as hard, which is obviously not an option if you're a bodybuilder and you want to continue doing it. Or you take something to supplement your body. It would be like if your thyroid gland was low, would you just say, well, everyone else's thyroid gland works, I'll just have to just suffer with a low thyroid and and get fat and then have a low metabolic function. No, you you supplement with thyroid hormone if you need it. And that's the same thing with with your pancreas. If your pancreas is not working properly because it cannot keep up with insulin output. And the great thing about taking a long acting insulin out, I just want to point out, is that if you take it, a lot of times, because you're resting the pancreas, and now the, pan- the pancreas has to produce X amount of insulin, and you take, you take a supplemental form of long-acting insulin, now it doesn't have to produce insulin. It's kind of resting itself now and regenerating. And we know, we've seen the research, that the, the beta cells can regenerate if they're given time to. However, if you're constantly making them work, 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 and they can't keep up, they burn out and they die off. So by taking a long-acting insulin, you do take the burden off the pancreas and you do arrest the pancreas and you do allow those beta cells to regenerate. And a lot of times you can stop taking insulin sometimes because your beta cell function will restore itself. So to make a blanket statement like this is ignorant and it, you know, it, it seems a little arrogant on his part to, to, to try to dismiss it obviously. It was trying to like make it seem like I'm like talking out my ass or something like that. But, there's serious science behind this, and I've seen so much blood work, and I've seen so many bodybuilders that, you know, my, my goal, you know, in helping the bodybuilding world and, and being involved as a coach and an educator is to, once again, help people make, avoid mistakes that we made, you know, 10, 20 years ago. And we have this technology, we can test blood sugar with a simple blood sh- glucometer you can buy from Walmart for $10. And we know that we have data at our disposal. And if you're not using a lot, it in, you know, uh, your blood sugar and lowering blood sugar properly because you're not producing enough insulin, then you can do something about it. And that's being proactive. That's not being stupid, okay? Not everyone has adequate insulin production in their body. And that's just a fact. Some people have tremendous insulin. You see these 400 pound people, you, you test their blood sugar and it's normal. I don't know how. How the heck is their body supposed they just happen to have a genetically good insulin output. And then there's other people that eat that are in immaculate shape. And they go and they turn out to be type 2 diabetics, which be, can progress to type 1 diabetes. Why? Because their whole family has a history of that, and genetically their bodies are programmed at a certain age, they stop producing insulin at, at high enough at values, and they got to supplement with it. And if they don't, and here's the, the terrible thing, a lot of the, the doctors you go to want to put you on, glu- uh, on metformin, they want to put you on all kinds of oral medications, everything but an insulin shot. Why? Because most people don't want to take shots, and secondly, they think people are too stupid to take insulin and that they're going to screw up. The great thing about long-acting insulin is that you don't have to worry about it. if you take a shot of long-acting insulin, okay, you're not going to just, in 10 minutes later, hit the ground with low blood sugar. It's very, very slow-acting. As a matter of fact, you take long-acting insulin before bed. On, you don't even have to have any food in your system because it doesn't matter. It's a slow long acting type of, of situation. It's not a rapid acting insulin like Humalog or Novolog where, okay, if I take five units of insulin, I better eat 50 grams of carbs because otherwise I'm gonna get low blood sugar. That's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about a long acting insulin. Now, 
is there a place for short acting, fast acting insulins to help with you know in in ingesting carbohydrates? Yeah, because you know what? If you don't have blood, good blood sugar control, you might on, on a regular basis when you eat clean foods, you know, have your blood sugars two hours after a meal under 130. They might be you know 90, 100, and you're, you're like looking great. But then you have a cheat meal, and the next morning when you wake up, or or two hours later, you're still at 160 or 180. Your blood sugar. That's not good. That means your body can't handle the large amount of food you just ate. You might need to take a long acting, a short acting, excuse me, fast acting insulin with that meal to keep it down. And the only way you know these things is by testing your blood sugar with a simple blood sugar monitor. So when people like this, like Holly said, make blanket statements about, you know, because his latest coach tells him this is the way it is, uh, whereas his former coach had him using insulin, he probably was touting insulin at the time. That's just, that's providing poor information to the public because what his medical status is and his state of insulin production and blood sugar control is not what the next guy is. I've seen some top level bodybuilders who have shown me blood work that I, I was horrified by and we fix the problem. But the, the problem is that you cannot just assume because one person does this that you have to do the same thing. Likewise, I have a lot of bodybuilders who come to me and say, I, I want to, shouldn't I be taking insulin because so-and-so is taking insulin? And I'm like, no, because your blood sugar control is perfect, you're growing adequately, you tend to get fat real easily, so there's no reason to add extra insulin in, and you have to evaluate each person on an individual by individual basis. Why? Because we all have different genetics and we all produce insulin at different amounts and different variabilities with different insulin sensitivities. What I found is people who train usually have better insulin sensitivity because we know that working out actually increases the amount of insulin receptors on the cells, which makes us absorb our blood sugars better. So if you have high blood sugar and you work out, there's a problem there. And to ignore it is stupid. Okay, and unfortunately, a lot of doctors are not that up to speed. Uh, they like to send, give you metformin, which is great because it does suppress you know, liver output of insulin, but it doesn't help the pancreas that's straining to produce enough insulin. It doesn't take any burden off the pancreas. It just keeps blood sugars a little lower, okay, but it's not giving that pancreas a rest. And that's a problem if, if, if the body cannot handle okay, the insulin load that it's being asked to produce. So never make a blanket, and I would never make a blanket statement about, hey, this is the way we're gonna do things because I do this with everyone. That's not how insulin works. Steroid cycles are pretty much comparable for people of comparable weight and size, but not insulin usage, okay? Likewise, you have to also take into account how much growth hormone you're taking. If you're a person who doesn't control you know, blood sugar well because you don't produce that much insulin, okay, you sure, certainly shouldn't be taking you know, 20 IUs of GH a day either because that's really gonna make things worse. But if you're gonna take growth hormone, you also have to understand that you're gonna make yourself more you know, vulnerable to running higher blood sugars, and you have to know this. You can't walk around with your head in the sand. Test your blood sugars every morning when you wake up, okay? Keep a log, you'll know. I have my guys send me every, every you know, uh, couple days, they're sending me their blood sugars. And once we get them in a, in a groove properly, a lot of times I don't have to you know, ever change anything. But off season, a lot of guys have to take a long acting insulin now. And they don't have to, I advise them to because their blood sugars are high. If you're running 105, 110 fasting blood sugar, that's not good in my book. And most people, when you educate them about the health and what the, you know, what the ramifications of running high blood sugars are, they wanna fix the problem. Plus what you'll find is that you grow better when you're absorbing all your food. When the sugars are in control, you're gonna put size on it at a, better, at a better pace and recover better as well. So, to summarize everything I'm saying here today, uh, insulin, okay, blood sugar, and the status of the two, okay, and how the body interacts with that is all based on individualistic genetics and how your body responds to the different foods we eat and whether you're in an off-season or pre-contest situation. Get a blood sugar, test your blood sugars. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Don't be ignorant because ignorance, okay, is no excuse when you're 10, 20 years from now having to get your foot amputated or you're in kidney failure or you have no insulin production and you're a full-blown type 1 diabetic, okay? Remember, educate yourself and then you can prevent yourself from having any of these problems. And you know what? You're going to make yourself a better bodybuilder. I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle Rant.